Let us close our eyes for a moment and travel back in time. Not just a little way back, like to when our grandparents were young, but much, much further. We are journeying millions and millions of years into the past, to a time long before any people lived on our planet Earth. The world we are visiting is a wild and wonderful place, filled with strange plants, vast forests, and enormous, rumbling volcanoes. The air is warm and thick, and the sounds you hear are not birds chirping or cars humming, but something altogether different. Can you hear it? A deep, thudding footstep, a rustle in the giant ferns, and a low, rumbling call that echoes through the valleys. This was the world of the dinosaurs. This ancient world was their home, their kingdom. In the world of dinosaurs, just like in our world today, animals needed to eat to live. And what they ate divided them into two very big groups. First, there were the plant eaters, which scientists call herbivores. Imagine a creature so large it needs to eat plants all day long just to have enough energy. They had teeth that were specially shaped for grinding and chomping tough plant material, not for tearing meat. These plant eaters often lived together in large groups, or herds. Why do you think they did that? Living in a herd was much safer. Their lives were a constant, slow-moving search for food, a peaceful existence spent in the warm, prehistoric sunshine, surrounded by their family and friends. On the other side, we have the meat-eaters, which we call carnivores. These dinosaurs were the hunters of their time. They were built for speed and power. Many had sharp, serrated teeth, like little knives, perfect for slicing through meat. They might hunt alone, using surprise to catch a smaller animal. Or they might even hunt in packs, working together as a team to take down a much larger dinosaur. Of all the dinosaurs that ever lived, perhaps none is as famous or as fearsome as the Tyrannosaurus rex. Its name means Tyrant Lizard King, and it certainly lived up to that title. The T-Rex was one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs that ever walked the earth. Imagine standing next to one. Its head alone was enormous, over a meter and a half long, and it was filled with the most incredible teeth. These teeth were not just sharp, they were huge, like bananas, and they were serrated like a steak knife, perfect for crushing bone. But what about its arms? You may have noticed that T-Rex had very tiny arms, each with only two claws. The T-Rex was a powerful hunter that lived right at the very end of the age of dinosaurs. It had incredibly strong legs that allowed it to move surprisingly quickly for such a big animal. When it came to dinner, the T-Rex was not a picky eater. It was at the very top of the food chain, which means it could hunt almost any other dinosaur it wanted to. Its roar must have been a terrifying sound that echoed for miles, a warning to all other creatures that the tyrant lizard was on the move. Now, let us meet a dinosaur that was a contemporary of the T-Rex, and one that was certainly not afraid to stand its ground. This is the wonderful Triceratops, whose name means three-horned face. And what a face it had. It had two long horns above its eyes, much like a bull, and a shorter horn on its nose. But that is not all. Behind its horns, it had a huge bony shield called a frill that protected its neck and shoulders. The Triceratops was a plant eater, a very large one. It was about the size of an elephant and it was built like a tank, low to the ground and very sturdy. It had a powerful parrot-like beak at the front of its mouth which was perfect for snipping off tough plants like cycads and palms. Further back in its mouth, it had hundreds of teeth arranged in rows, which were excellent for slicing and grinding its food. Living at the same time and in the same place as the T-Rex meant that Triceratops had to be ready for a fight. Those incredible horns were not just for show. When a T-Rex came looking for a meal, a Triceratops could use its horns as powerful weapons. It could charge at the predator, using its strong neck muscles to drive its horns forward with great force. Many fossils of T-Rex and Triceratops have been found with battle scars, showing that these two giants really did fight each other. Let us now tilt our heads way, way back and look up, and up, and up some more. We are looking at one of the tallest dinosaurs that ever lived, the Brachiosaurus. Its name is very clever. It means arm lizard. This is because, unlike most other dinosaurs, its front legs were longer than its back legs. This gave it a steeply sloped back and pushed its shoulders high into the air, making its long neck reach even higher, a bit like a modern-day giraffe. 
a fully grown Brachiosaurus could have peeked into a fourth story window. The Brachiosaurus was a gentle plant eater, and its incredible height gave it a special advantage. While other herbivores were munching on ferns and low growing shrubs, the Brachiosaurus could reach the tender leaves at the very tops of the tallest trees. It would use its long, flexible neck to move its head from treetop to treetop, stripping away leaves with its peg like teeth. It did not really chew its food. Instead, it would swallow the leaves whole, and they would be ground up in its enormous stomach. To power such an enormous body, a Brachiosaurus had to eat a tremendous amount of food every single day, hundreds of kilograms of plants. Because of its massive size, an adult Brachiosaurus probably did not have to worry too much about predators. It likely lived a peaceful life, wandering through the ancient forests in small herds, the ground trembling slightly with each of its huge footsteps. The time of the dinosaurs was incredibly long, much longer than you might think. It was so long, in fact, that scientists have divided it into three separate parts, or periods. The first period was called the Triassic Period. This was the very beginning of the age of dinosaurs. The world was quite dry and hot, and the continents were all joined together in one giant landmass called Pangaea. The very first dinosaurs appeared during this time. They were generally smaller than the giants that would come later, and they shared the world with many other strange reptiles. Next came the famous Jurassic period. Does that name sound familiar? This was the time when the dinosaurs truly became the rulers of the Earth. The giant supercontinent of Pangaea began to break apart, and the climate became warmer and wetter. This meant that huge, lush forests of ferns and tall trees grew all over the world. This was wonderful news for the plant-eating dinosaurs. This period saw the rise of the giant long-necked sauropods like Brachiosaurus and Diplodocus, as well as the famous Stegosaurus with its bony plates. The final chapter in the story of the dinosaurs was the Cretaceous period. This was the longest of the three periods, and it was when dinosaur diversity was at its greatest. The continents continued to move apart, looking a little more like they do today. Flowering plants appeared for the first time, which changed the landscape and provided new food sources. This was the time of the most famous dinosaurs of all, including the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex and the well-armored Triceratops. It was a vibrant and dynamic time, the grand finale for the age of dinosaurs before their sudden disappearance. When we think of dinosaurs, our minds often jump to the enormous giants like T-Rex and Brachiosaurus. But the world of dinosaurs was also filled with many, many smaller creatures, some of which were no bigger than a modern-day chicken. One of the most famous of these small dinosaurs is the Compsognathus. It was a nimble little meat-eater that lived during the Jurassic period. It was only about one meter long from its nose to the tip of its long tail, and it would have scurried around on two legs, chasing after insects, lizards, and other small prey. Take Microraptor, for example. This was a tiny dinosaur from the Cretaceous period that was covered in feathers. And not just on its body. It had long feathers on its arms and its legs, forming four wings. Scientists believe that Microraptor could not fly like a bird, but it could probably glide from tree to tree, a bit like a flying squirrel. Fossils like this are so important because they show us a direct link between dinosaurs and the birds we see in our gardens today. It's an incredible connection across millions of years, why were there so many small dinosaurs? Well, just like today, different sized animals are suited for different ways of life. A tiny dinosaur could hide from larger predators in places a giant could not fit. It could also hunt for small creatures that a big carnivore would not bother with. Discovering these small dinosaurs is often very difficult. Their bones are delicate and tiny, so they are much rarer to find as fossils compared to the huge, sturdy bones of a giant sauropod. How can we possibly know so much about creatures that lived and disappeared millions of years before the first person ever existed? The answer lies buried in the ground, in special rocks called fossils. A fossil is the preserved remains of a plant or animal from a very long time ago. When a dinosaur died, sometimes its body would be quickly covered by mud, sand, or silt from a river or lake. Over millions of years, the soft parts of the dinosaur would rot away, but the hard parts, like its bones, teeth, and claws, would remain. Minerals in the surrounding mud would seep into the bones, turning them into stone. These fossilized bones are like pieces of a giant, ancient puzzle. 
Scientists who study dinosaurs are called paleontologists, and they are like detectives. They carefully travel to places around the world where dinosaur fossils are found, and they dig them out of the rock with great care, using small brushes and tools. It is very slow and patient work. Once they have collected the bones, they take them back to a laboratory, where they clean them and try to fit them together to rebuild the dinosaur's skeleton. But fossils tell us more than just what a dinosaur's skeleton looked like. Paleontologists can learn so much from these stone clues. Fossilized teeth can tell us what a dinosaur ate, sharp, pointy teeth for meat, and flat, grinding teeth for plants. The shape of the leg bones can tell us if the dinosaur walked on two legs or four, and whether it was a fast runner or a slow walker. Sometimes they even find fossilized footprints called trackways, which show us how dinosaurs moved and whether they traveled alone or in herds. Sometimes, scientists get incredibly lucky and find even more amazing fossils. They have found fossilized dinosaur eggs, some with tiny baby dinosaur skeletons still inside. This tells us how dinosaurs reproduced and cared for their young. We have journeyed back in time, met the mighty T-Rex, the sturdy Triceratops, and the towering Brachiosaurus. We have explored their world and learned their secrets from the fossils they left behind. But now, let us ask a fun and curious question. What if they never disappeared? What if, when you looked out your window tomorrow morning, you saw dinosaurs walking down your street? It is a wonderful thing to imagine, is it not? How different would our world be if we shared it with these magnificent creatures from the past? Imagine a long-necked Brachiosaurus gently munching leaves from the tallest trees in the park. It would be so tall that its head would be higher than the houses. Would we build special tall bridges for it to walk under? Seeing a herd of them moving slowly across a field would be a sight more amazing than any video or picture. They would be the gentle giants of our modern world, a peaceful and awe-inspiring presence. And what about the carnivores? A velociraptor, clever and quick, might be a bit more of a challenge to live with. We would certainly need very strong fences to keep them safe and to keep us safe too. Perhaps they would be like the lions and tigers of today living in special wildlife reserves where they could run and hunt in a natural habitat. Can you imagine a zookeeper who trains velociraptors? Thinking about dinosaurs living today makes us appreciate just how special they were and how much our world has changed. But it is fun to dream, is it not? To imagine a world where the past and the present meet. The next time you see a bird in the sky, look closely. Remember the feathered dinosaurs and know that a small part of their incredible world is still with us today. The dinosaurs may be gone, but they will never, ever be forgotten.